We are alone, but I still feel like there's ghosts around here. You mean Martine? Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you what. Maybe I'll change rooms. She can haunt away all she wants in room 909, and we'll be in room 910. <laughs> say that this is a chance of a lifetime, I'm not exaggerating. I mean, you can't just turn it down for some whimsical reason. You know what this business is like, Jody. For every one job, there's a hundred dancers. Yeah, I know that all right. Uh, you could wait a lifetime waiting to get a job in a chorus line or something. I mean, to say nothing of a featured role. But that's what worries me. Look, if you would have offered me my original position with the company, I would have found it... Well, a lot easier to say yes. Jody, listen to me. Do you think that I'd risk my reputation and my money if I didn't think that you could do the job? <sighs> well, I wish I thought I could do it. You'll have all the time that you need. You won't be rushed, I promise you. But I've got no deadlines to meet. All right, all right. Um, I promise I'll give you an answer by today. I just want to talk to one more person. So I'll hear from you by tonight, right? Yes, by tonight. Goodbye. Oh, what am I going to do? You are quite a salesman. Well, you don't miss a trick, do you? Try not to. Did I sound persuasive? <laughs> well, let's put it this way. If you ever want to get out of the dance business, you could make a fortune as a used car salesman. <laughs> Well, in this case, I was making a very attractive job offer to the young lady. I don't see how she could possibly refuse. And I hope she does. Yes, I know you do. Come on, Sky. Jody should be dancing in some kind of a go-go lounge, not with the Whitney Dance Company. Um, have you ever seen her dance, Raven? No. Well, then, on what do you base your critical opinion? Because she is an amateur little nothing, and anyone who looks at her can see that. I have seen her on stage. And what I saw was my next big discovery. Well, I think you're making a big mistake. And that is your opinion, Raven. One that I'm not even sure you're entitled to have. You see, this is my business. And I don't like you minding it. Now, I'm going to order some food. Would you like me to get you something? No, thank you. You're not going to shut me out, darling, or shut me up. Like it or not, I'm going to keep that little temptation out of your way. Some coffee here, please. Yes, sir. Would you like some, Raven? I'm fine. Stop pouting. It doesn't become you a bit. I'm not pouting. I'm happy. Um, would you do me a favor? Why don't you uh, worry about who's having the best dress sale in town? It would be a lot more productive. Hey, you don't tell me what to do. I don't tell you what to do, okay? There is absolutely no reason for you to be concerned about my interest in Jody Travis. The girl has got talent. What kind of talent? Dancing talent. Don't expect me to assuage your jealous feelings. They're utter nonsense. You want to know what I think? I think that you're hiring Jody Travis just to spite your ex-girlfriend. You're way off base, Ray. No, 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 no. I think I have this one pegged perfectly. And if you're spiting Martine, that means that you still think of her. And that's what I'm objecting to. You seem to be forgetting the ground rules, Precious. And what are they, Precious? You are my pleasure, Raven. <laughs> And one doesn't mix one's business with one's pleasure. I told you that when we began our relationship, and I really don't like repeating myself. I am on your side. I am only trying to help you. 
In one ear and out the other. Gunther, would you step in here a moment, please? Yes, yeah, sir. What can I do for you, Mr. Whitney? Uh, good morning, Mrs. Swift. What does the schedule look like for today, Gunther? Well, at uh, 10.30, you're due at the contractors to approve some changes they want to make in the refurbishing of the balcony section of the theater. At an additional cost, no doubt. Uh, and then you have an appointment with your lawyer and then a luncheon meeting with uh, that Mr. Wilkins. You wanted to hire him as the stage manager for mm -hmm. the Whitney. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll be dressed. I'll be with you in 10 minutes. Uh, very good, sir. Why don't you give your uh, schedule to Gunther? He's at your disposal. How kind of you. As long, of course, as your plans don't interfere with mine. Will you be needing me, Mrs. Swift? Yes, Gunther. I think that I will need you for a little while. Fine with me. There's one place I'd like to go today. Where would that be, Mrs. Swift? I'd like to go to Dr. Kavanaugh's house. The door. Um, hi, you must be Jody, right? That's right. Well, I don't know if you remember me or not, but I'm Raven Swift. I'm a very, very good friend of Sky Whitney, and I would like to talk to you. Does Sky know you're working for him? Well, I just want to make sure that Sky doesn't make any more mistakes. You have no idea how crushed he was about this dance company. It meant everything to him. Yes, well, I was very upset, too. I'm sure. He spent thousands and thousands of dollars, not to say anything about the, the amount of publicity he started. From what I heard, Sky is still planning to have this company, right? That's right, he is. And that's why I just want to make sure he doesn't make another mistake. Do you mean by hiring me? So it's true. Did you sign a contract with Skye? I don't see why that's your business, Mrs. Swift. I think it's strictly between them. You think I should stay out of it? <laughs> well, I think you should stay out of it. I mean, after all, you and Skye are no longer together, so why should it matter? It's Jody I care about. And it's Jody I'm concerned about. That's why I don't think that this is really a good idea. Oh, so you're the one who doesn't think you should hire me. Well, Jody, do you... Do you really think that you can handle all of this responsibility? You've never danced professionally. One mistake and he loses millions of dollars. Sky Whitney is a millionaire several times over, Jody. He can afford it. No one can afford to throw money away. And that's what you think he'll be doing if I decide to say yes? Jody, face it. You're not a professional, are you? No, but she's a very, very good dancer. And you don't want to see her make a fool of herself, just as I don't want to see Sky make a fool of himself. That's enough, Mrs. Swift. You have no right to interfere. Oh, don't I? Do you want me to tell you how I have the right? I'm sure you work pretty hard for that. Well, look, I know one thing. I have a lot of things to do this afternoon, and so does Martine. So if you'll excuse us, Mrs. Swift. Jody, I just wanted you to understand that I want to help. Yes, that's very kind of you. Thank you so much. Well, can you tell me when you'll give Sky your answer? As a matter of fact, it's going to be today. Goodbye, Mrs. Swift. Then it's true, Skylar. You're no longer seeing Martine. Yes, it's true. We have agreed to disagree. You don't seem very distressed by it. Well, what's the use? When something is over, it's over. There's no use in uh, shedding tears about it. One must just attempt to carry on. That sounds like common sense, but I can't believe it's quite so cut and dried. I assumed you cared for Martine. And you liked her, didn't you? Yes, indeed, I did. In fact, you thought she was much too good for me. Is that why she left you? Well, she didn't leave. Geraldine, it was I who suggested that our uh, arrangement was no longer satisfactory. Well, whatever. Still, I, I'm rather troubled by it. I really think Martine would have been very good for you, especially if you could have made your relationship a bit more solid. You mean uh, marry her? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you believe that your ward, Raven, is too good for me? The truth is, Skylar. Raven is the real reason I came to talk to you this afternoon. 
As you know, I have sort of taken responsibility for Raven ever since her mother's death, and now that she is without her husband and her child. And you're worried, is that it? You're afraid that your spoiled nephew might take away your responsibility? <laughs> I'm quite willing to hand that responsibility over to someone else, if it's the right person. Ah, now we come to the heart of the matter. Well, I am rather troubled by it, Skyra. And I was even more troubled when I learned that you and Martine were no longer seeing each other. The phrase is living together, Auntie. However, let me give you a piece of good news. Raven is not going to be my live-in roommate. She's turned down the offer. Now, does that uh, make you feel better? Well, it surprises me. But then Raven always surprises me. <laughs> and it pleases you. Yes, indeed, it does. Well, let me just uh, tell you something that you ought to know. Uh, Raven's decision was not really a moral one. It was tactical. What do you mean by that? I know exactly what Raven is doing. See, she believes that by refusing to live with me, she will induce me to take the next logical step down the wedding aisle. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I assure you that is the name of Raven's game. And she's welcome to play it. You see, I am rather expert at that sort of thing. And she doesn't have a chance. Excuse me. Hello. Is this Mr. Whitney? Yes, it is. Who's this? Mr. Whitney, my name is Damien Tyler. I'm with the Monticello Police Department. Oh, well, don't tell me you've towed away the limo. <laughs> no, sir. I'm not with the traffic division. <clears throat> Actually, uh, I'd like to discuss something else with you at your convenience. Concerning? I'm looking for some information about a mutual acquaintance of ours, uh, Mr. Whitney. If you could just give me an appointment whenever you're free to see me. Uh, well, as it turns out, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Tyler, I don't have any free time. Perhaps you should call uh, uh, next week. Actually, next month would be a bit better. Look, I've promised to meet you wherever you say, and I'll just take a few minutes of your time. Who is this mutual acquaintance? All right. Maybe I'd better call you back at another date. And thank you. Goodbye. Well, Jody, come on in. I just stopped by to tell you that I've made my decision about your offer. And? The answer is yes. I'd very much like the chance. Well, that's wonderful, Jody. Mm. It's just wonderful. <laughs> Sky, you are mad. Hiring that, that little Lolita is the star of your dance company? I didn't think you were serious. I thought you'd at least come to your senses or the little twerp would turn you down. How could she turn down stardom? Because I thought she would be smart enough to realize that it would never happen. Why not? She's got all the necessary talent. All she needs is experience and training. Instead of an opening night, you're going to have amateur night. Jody is going to dance for me. She's going to knock herself out becoming just what I wanted to be. What would you say if I asked you not to hire her? Oh, that's an easy one. I'd say no. Well, what would you say if I asked you to please, please don't hire her? Well, I'd still say no. Perhaps I'd say it a bit more politely. What would you say if I said it was her or me? Quit while you're ahead, precious. Excuse me. Now, what are you doing? Well, I've been partying so much this week. I have to go home and wash my hair tonight. I'm being punished, is that it? Maybe you should wash your hair, too. Get a book and go to bed early. Excuse me. I'm looking for Mr. Schuyler Whitney. I'm Whitney. Who are you? I'm Detective Damian Tyler, Monticello Police Department. I believe I spoke to you earlier. Yes, that's right, you did. And I said I would see you when I had time. Well, I was hoping you'd make some time to see me right now. Well, before we begin this, why don't you tell me what it's all about? It's about a friend of yours, Martine Duval. I didn't think you'd remember me, Mr. Whitney. You had a lot of guests at your party in Paris. 
Uh, who did you say invited you? I came with a friend, Inspector Jacques Diderot from the French Sûreté. He thought I needed an evening's relaxation. I assumed he'd take me to the Crazy Horse Saloon, but somehow we ended up at your place. And there you saw Martine. What a disappointment. Oh, not at all. She was very lovely. Uh, well, she was younger then. <laughs> I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Oh, excuse me. This is Mrs. Raven Swift. She was just leaving. Hello. Don't forget your appointment, my dear. I believe it's with your hairdresser. Well, I think I'll stay because I know Martine, too, and maybe I can be of some help. Raven has met Mr. Val perhaps all of twice, Lieutenant. Uh, it's detective, Mr. Whitney. I don't have a rank yet. My darling, this matter is a bit personal, so if you don't mind... Skyler, I would like to stay and find out why the police are interested in your ex-friend. Ex-friend? I believe I've answered just about all the questions I intend to, Mr. Uh, Tyler. So if you want to know anything else about Martine, ask her yourself. I've already spoken to Miss Duval at a place called Wiley's Dance Studio. Curiouser and curiouser. I don't know what it is you're after, but that party in Paris was quite a long time ago. And as far as I'm concerned, the past is dead and buried. So if you're here to stir up some problems... That's not my intention. Well, I don't care what your intentions are. You're not going to get any help from me. Tell me something. Why are you after Martina? Are you going to arrest her? No, that's not my intention either. As far as I know, there's no warrant out for her arrest, either here or abroad. Well, is she involved in something criminal? Actually, it's her husband, Collier Wells. He's still a fugitive. Her husband? I think I'm going to faint. Well, Miss Duval kept her little secret uh, very well. This is the second surprised reaction I've had. I can't believe it. Sky, didn't Martine tell you she was married? Well, I knew about Collie Wells, of course, but I thought it was just her boyfriend. Oh, she's married all right. I've seen the records. And the marriage is still intact, legally. So she's married to a crook. Please, Detective, tell us more. How is Skye involved in this? And, and tell me about this party in Paris. Well, you obviously made quite a hit with the young lady, Mr. Tyler. Are the police after her husband? Actually, it's the insurance company that's more concerned about Mr. Wales. All right, all right. This quiz is over. I didn't know it begun. It seems like I've answered more questions than I've asked. Well, I am sorry. It's been a genuine pleasure meeting you, Mr. Tyler. I'm sure you won't be offended if I hope I never have the pleasure again. I've heard that before. But thank you very much for your time, Mr. Whitney. Very nice to have met you, Mrs. Swift. I'm glad you enjoyed my company. If you could have seen your face when he said she was married. You poor baby. She was playing games with you. Don't worry. I'm here now. Or you're no longer mad at me, is that it? Sky, how could I possibly stay mad at you? Come on, baby. Let's um slip into something more comfortable and talk. Hmm? I don't know what's wrong with me. I mean, I used to know exactly how men would react. Now I don't know. Now I, I realize that men are the weaker sex as far as you are concerned. But times are changing. I understand they have some sort of liberation movement now. You think I made a mistake walking out on him? Was it honest anger or were you play acting as usual? Well, I don't think that men should be sure of you. You know, then they begin to take you for granted and it's all over. But to quarrel for no reason? There was a reason. He was behaving ridiculously. He, he hired a little girl to play the lead in his dance company. It is his company and he does know something about the dance. And I know something about men. They think that young and sexy are the same thing. Are you suggesting that his interest in this girl is personal? I don't know. All I know is that your nephew simply baffles me. <laughs> oh, Raven. All of your life, you have played men like stringed instruments. Evidently, Skylar is a bit more difficult to handle. I just haven't found the right key yet. Or perhaps you've met your match. Never. A hundred dollars that that is him. That sounds like a good bet. I'll take it. Hello? Raven. Good morning. It's Sky. You owe me a hundred dollars. Hello. I trust you slept well. Quite well, thank you. How about yourself? Like a baby. You know, solitude is really great sometimes. <laughs> 
Yes, it uh, has its benefits. Yes. Well, what can I do for you? Well, actually, I was calling my Aunt Geraldine. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. May I speak with my Aunt Bashida? It's for you. Well, never mind the bet. We'll call it a draw. Yes, Skyler. Geraldine, how are you? I'm sorry to bother you so early in the morning, but I was wondering if you had any free time today. To do what? Well, I'd like to stop by the studio and talk to you about a news item I would like for you to run. It's about my new dance troupe and my new discovery. Ah, yes. That would be Jody Travis, I presume. The nerve of that man calling you first thing in the morning to tell you to put that little brat on television. But we have done half a dozen stories on the Whitney Dance Company. It will be the first theater of its kind in Monticello. And now everyone is aware that the opening has been postponed. And it's going to close forever if he goes on with this silly idea. Skyler simply wanted us to announce that his company has not been dissolved, that it will open at a later date. Obviously, he said something about Jody. Well, he did suggest we might want to interview the girl. Don't you dare! Raven, the station's affairs are none of your business. Skylar Whitney's affairs are. <laughs> My, you are possessive, aren't you? Well, I think I've earned the right. Well, I won't ask you how. Don't you care about me? You can't possibly be on his side just because he's your nephew. Even my dear girl, I am not choosing sides. The fact that Skylar Whitney is my nephew means nothing. I knew the boy. I don't know the man. And you don't know Jody Travis. Well, I've met her. She seems like a nice, sweet, unspoiled girl to me. I thought you were a good judge of character. Well, some people would question that. She would never have taken that job if she was sweet and unspoiled. Everyone in town knows Skylar Whitney. But I thought you liked him. Well, I do. I also know his nature. Oh, I'm sure you're worried about nothing at all. I'm sure he's genuinely interested in this girl's talent, not in the girl herself. Besides, she has a mind of her own. Furthermore, she has a boyfriend of her own, Kelly McGrath. Well, I'll tell you one thing. There is only one woman who is going to take Martine's place in Sky Whitney's life, and that woman is me. I couldn't believe it when I heard the news, Martine. Someone so full of life shouldn't try to throw it away. Why don't you go away? I'm tired. I don't want you here. I had to come. I had to tell you what a stupid thing that was. And to see what I could do for you. You can't just leave me alone. You know how guilty I feel, don't you? I realize this is all my fault. Your fault? Don't fool yourself, Sky. It had nothing to do with you. If you think I tried to drown myself because of you, you're wrong. Be honest, precious. I drowned myself in champagne when I realized I was free from you. When I had no reason to wake up every morning with you beside me. I died when I was with you. When I left you, I came alive. I see. Well, that really is too bad. I had tried to commit suicide because of me. <laughs> it would have done wonders to my reputation. Well, I'll give these flowers to the floor nurse. I'm sure she'll know what to do with them. Oh, um... Do you know someone by the name of uh, Damien Tyler? He's a police officer. He came to see me. About what? About you, 
obviously. And he said something very interesting. Martine, why did you never tell me that you're married? Just be your charming self, Gunther. I'm sure you'll be most persuasive. Yeah, I'll do my best, Mr. Wood. Gunther, I come in the door and you walk out. Now, that's not very hospitable. Well, Gunther is running a rather important errand for me. It's nice to see you again, Mrs. Swift. Now, uh, don't forget, Gunther, be tactful. I always am, Mr. Whitney. Look, I'll be back just as quick as I can. Drive carefully. I always do, Mrs. Swift. Well, good evening. Alone at last. Mm -hmm. Can I get you a drink? Trying to ply me with liquor? Mm -hmm. Yes, I want a drink. Well, to what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? I'm glad my visits are still pleasurable. Well, when they stop being that, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> you'll never guess what I did today. I hope it was nothing illegal. I went to see Jody Travis. You went to see Jody? Yes, she's a lovely girl, and I think we're going to get along famously. <sighs> Just what is this all about, Raven? I want to help her. Don't you think that's nice of me? <clears throat> um, just what sort of help is this going to be? I'm going to be her friend, her companion, her confidant. With a friend like you, I may have to hire her a food taster. What a rotten thing to say. Just what sort of little game is it that you're playing now, Raven? Why are you so suspicious? Well, I have got a good memory, you know. I know that you hate the idea of my association with Jody. Yes, in the beginning I did have some reservations. Oh, and now we've got your blessing. Well, doesn't my gesture of friendship prove it? Sky, I just want to be useful to you. If I thought that she required a companion, I would have gone out and bought her a poodle. <laughs> Look, I know how much this company means to you, and I just want to contribute something to its success. Well, why don't you... Uh volunteer to help out in the office one or two days a week. I mean, there are envelopes to be stuffed and telephones to be answered. I know that you think Jody has the ability to be a star. Now, I respect your opinion, and I want to help her. Uh, what do you say we ring down the curtain on this little performance, Raven? What are you talking about? I know very well that this is just phase one of some devious plan of yours to undermine Jody. How could you possibly think such an awful thing? I told you before to stay out of my business. Now, I meant what I said. Is this the thanks I get for all my help? Stay away from Jody. Now, I mean that. Stay away from her. All right. I will stay away from Jody. And I will also stay away from her employer. on your face would seem to remove any doubts about the answer. Sometimes I wonder if it's all worth it. Are you referring to life in general, or do you have something specific in mind? Men! They are impossible. All men, or one man in particular? I'll give you one guess. Oh, dear. You and Skylar have had a tiff, I take it. So what else is new? You two seem to be waging a very active battle of the sexes lately. In that case, have you given any thought to revising your goal about becoming Mrs. Scarlet Whitney. What do you think I am, a quitter? We may have our differences, but they are not irreconcilable. Raven, all you seem to do is fight with Scarlet and then walk out on him. Well, I don't know what to do. Nothing I do seems to please him. That could put a crimp in your plans. Assuming, of course, that Scarlet is looking for a wife and not a sparring partner. There's only one thing that I can think of that will make him realize how much he cares for me. It might be a tad dangerous. Raven, at the risk of dealing in cliché, she who plays with fire is very likely to get burned. Would you agree with my observation that Skylar Whitney has an enormous ego? Oh, yes. Skylar firmly believes that the world revolves around him. And everything he wants, he gets. Quite so. 
Well, what would happen if something that he thought he had suddenly was lost? Yeah, we fight harder to keep it, I suppose. What are you suggesting? <laughs> the old jealousy root. No, what else? No, 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 my dear. That is a very unattractive emotion. But it is a tried and true method, and it has worked throughout the ages. May I suggest an alternative route? Yes. Why don't you try honesty instead? Uh, that seems to me a far more desirable base on which to build a relationship. Obviously, you have been out of the game for a long time. You've forgotten a few things. Raven, I haven't forgotten anything. I just never played the game by those rules. I don't doubt that. Excuse me, I have to make a phone call. Well, my dear girl, should you need me, old-fashioned Geraldine will be in her room striking two rocks together so she can have a fire in her fireplace. Raven. 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 I'm sorry I don't recognize your telephone voice. Raven who? Stop playing games, Derek. You know who it is. How oh, are you? Raven Swift. The one and only. Wow, well, how pleasant to hear a voice from out of the past. Oh, it hasn't been that long. I mean, I've been waiting for you to call. Why? So you can think of another excuse for not seeing me? Oh, Derek, I only broke a couple of dates. A couple? The last four, but hell, who's counting? Look, you're taking this all wrong, Derek. I've missed you. Have you really? Yeah, I want to see you. Well, Raven, I don't know if that'd be a good idea. You know what they say about trying to go back home. Please say yes. You won't be sorry. Oh, Raven, no. Now, come on, what are you doing tonight? Do you have a date? No. All right, I'm coming over. Oh, wait a minute, Raven. No, it's settled, I'm coming over. We're going to have a reunion that you're going to remember for a long time. I can't wait. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Now, how do I let Skylar know about this? Mm -hmm. 